when you're an adult, all you're learning isn't always going to be inside of a building. We don't really decide what happens every day unless there's a planned outing or event that we're going to attend. Most days, we just kind of finish up where we had maybe left off the day before on a project, or sometimes we're just spontaneous. Anita Rios Sherman has six children under the age of 18. Five of them are on the autism spectrum. Today, the four youngest children will spend the morning at the local Natural History Museum where they'll explore, read, draw, and play with each other. It's an educational philosophy known as unschooling. They decided to try unschooling when the local public schools failed to meet the needs of her oldest son. She found that he benefited from a totally unstructured approach to learning and then tried the same method with her other children. There are many things about the unschooling philosophy that work really well with children that are on the autism spectrum. Um, a lot of it has to do with allowing them to explore their passions, for them not to have to earn that time to explore those things, because passions can turn into real life careers. School is a place where children learn to be stupid. And the process that makes them stupid, at least stupid in school, is other people trying to control their learning. That's John Holt, who's the intellectual godfather of the modern homeschooling movement. In a sense, he's the moral leader of a movement in this country on the part of a significant number of American families to take their kids out of school and teach them at home. There's a common perception that homeschoolers are social conservatives who want to shield their children from the modern world. But it's good for the child to get out of the home, get away from mom and dad, and, and talk to other people because when they become adults, they've got that problem. But Holt had a different view of the dangers of schooling. In his 10 books, Holt argued that children were capable of self-directed learning, possessing a natural curiosity that's quashed by modern schools. They treat them like an empty receptacles into which they are going to pour whatever learning they think they ought to have. And unschooling, when you say it today, people have the idea, oh, so you don't believe in schools. It's tricky because what John means by unschooling is learning that doesn't have to take place at home and that doesn't look like school, <laughs> you know, um, because we're learning all the time. Pat Ferenga is the publisher of a magazine-turned-website that promotes Holt's philosophy and the unschooling movement. Schools believe, and most teachers believe, children will not learn unless they are taught. And in order to be taught, the teacher must have X number of years of training and they can only teach the subjects that they've been trained in. However, children and most adults when they're not in school, and, and most kids when they're not in school, learn holistically. They learn from all their senses and they learn from their experiences, their relationships. And to, to, to just bottle it up and say that now we're going to learn math is... is is artificial. We were the only game in town in the 1980s and 90s. Unschooling was pretty much a small niche. Now there, you go online, there's anything from pagan unschoolers to radical unschoolers. And that to me is a, a great sign because there's a lot more of us. But while unschooling is closely tied to homeschooling, the two are not synonymous. Ferenga maintains a list of alternative schools that embrace some form of self-directed learning. I absolutely consider unschooling a spectrum. And that's, and again, if you read John's books, uh, Freedom and Beyond, um, and Instead of Education in particular, he talks about other places and you know, where, where children and adults can be to learn besides school. <laughs> One such example is the Houston Sudbury School, based on the Sudbury Valley School model pioneered in Massachusetts in 1968. Students here who range in age from 6 to 17 play and learn with each other, attend optional lessons in various subjects, and each have an equal vote on how the school is run and money allocated. I had been unschooling my daughter since she was born, but had encountered some limitations to that, primarily how much I as a parent had to be involved in decision making. So I became interested in this idea of was there a school that carried the same philosophy as unschooling but gave kids some autonomy from their parents. And I had heard about Sudbury. So the founders really came from the unschooling community here in Houston. So in this environment, the kids really can use the resources here, the space, the community, the money, and really create the life that they want. 
you don't have to like sit in one space, like you just get to go wherever. I mean, there's rules, but you can just do whatever you want. So for a long time in school, I uh, had a lot of problems <laughs> with uh, learning and I was in special, a lot of special ed classes. The uh, unstructured environment has been probably one of the best things to happen to me in my life, to not be going to school all day and just being not happy with life. You're not being in a classroom for days with your mental health slowly deteriorating because of endless classwork. You're going to be interacting with people and developing more social skills and responsibility because everybody is held accountable for what they do here. So in Sudbury, you get a chance to really explore what you want to do instead of just being forced to do stuff that really just interest you. There is just so much freedom. In public school, you kind of just like sit at a desk and listen to your teacher and that's it. I definitely learned what public school wanted me to learn. I listened in class, I was like, paid attention, I got good grades, but here you, I learned about what I want to learn about. They even have a daily judicial conference where they deal with rule breakers. During today's conference, they sent a six-year-old out to investigate who crumpled up a printout. Do you know who crumpled it up? but came up empty-handed and decided to drop the matter. While in a public school, you would have to go to a teacher or talk about something that happened, and typically they don't do a good job of sorting out a lot of those things. In JC, if something happens, even something small, you write that up and it gets talked about. It's a very orderly thing. There's no arguments. It's mostly about figuring out what happened and what can be done better. Enrolling in a school like Sudbury can be really scary. They're not getting what they would get in a traditional education. I was really afraid in thinking about this completely unstructured living for kids, but in my experience, these kids actually end up quite a bit more prepared in some ways than someone who's had a traditional education because they're actually participating in a lot more of the real life activities that people do. Making a huge decision for a group with the members of a group when the group doesn't always agree. While some parents might cringe to see their kids spending much of the day just hanging out, playing video games, or looking at their phones, believers in the Sudbury approach maintain that the kids will learn what they need when they need to do it. I consider it a huge disadvantage to keep kids from these devices and this technology, which is what they need to be learning how to navigate in our culture. Many of the kids who are interested in gaming and computers are the kids who will grow up to be in those fields, making the next big evolution in technology. There is plenty of time to gain everything that you can gain at public school, right here at Sudbury, and a lot of students do, and they actually learn it, as opposed to pretending to learn it for a test. If the whole high school happens in six months at a Sudbury school, I still believe they learn it better than they would over years and years of being forced to memorize it. Like most Sudbury schools, this one is private with a $7,000 annual tuition fee that they often modify to accommodate lower income parents. We would love for this school to be available to families regardless of their income. But I would not want to enter into any kind of situation where we are accountable to the state. Why do we want it? Want it. Why do we want it? Yeah. While the school choice movement has brought explosive growth in the number of charter schools nationwide, unschoolers haven't felt much effect. Homeschoolers haven't been able to take advantage of school choice because there's no funding available for homeschooling. That's not considered a choice. That's changed somewhat with educational savings accounts, which allow homeschoolers in some states to set aside a portion of their tax dollars for education. But Ferenga is skeptical of government involvement. When the school superintendent in the district where he lives earmarked funds for homeschoolers like him in the 90s, it eventually rescinded the money on the grounds that their activities were non educational educational. 99% of the stuff we did in this house, I'd say with the board games behind me and projects, there's a lot of different things that are educational. If you believe that you're learning all the time, and we are learning all the time, the world is your oyster. But instead it's like, oh no, that's not educational. 
Well, who determines that? Instead, Ferenga continues to advocate for unschooling as a social movement focused on the rights and personal freedoms of children to find their own way. Right now, the best thing you could do if you can't homeschool your child is ignore as much of school as possible and pay attention to what your child really wants to do and work with that.